right. All right, and I'm going to pass it on to Zavit, and she's going to start with introductions. Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming this week as well. Uh, my name is Zavit, and I'm Kaleidoscope Plan Learn Program Coordinator, and I'm usually based in the Seattle office of child care resources. Hi, this is Kimberly. I am a family engagement specialist with the Classical Play Learn program. And just like the rest of the people who are on this slide, I'm based in Seattle and I'm happy to be here today. And I'm Nicole Flores, family engagement specialist, just like Kim. Um, and yeah, I'm happy to be here as well. Are you with us, Zainab? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Zainab, and I'm the admin and data specialist at CCR in Seattle. Thank you. I also want to mention um, real quickly before we move on that we just really, really welcome any questions, comments, or ideas. Um, we have loved and appreciated all the involvement in our past webinars and um, we just love hearing from you so please um, if you have a question comment or just an idea please feel free to share that with us so um a little bit about why are we here today um, um i think it would be um better to say why are we here every week for the time being um so we would like to provide resources um how to stay connected with your community and your um group participants um of course share information that you could share with your um communities and some updates um we would love to strengthen our community, our um, KPL community and facilitators community and be there for you in this uh, hard time. And um, of course, um, leave some space for discussion and reflection and to hear from you, um, what are the needs, what do you experience, do you have any questions or requests from us? So the agenda for today, um, we'll go over the objectives uh, and um, I'll share something new about COVID-19. Um, we'll talk a little bit about KPL group updates and especially reporting um we'll talk a bit about supporting families uh we'll share some new resources um that you can use uh communicating with your families in the group um and we'll go over a little bit uh on how to teach children to wash their hands um some resources about that uh, some more activities, what to do at home, some ideas, uh, story times, and, and um, um, some activities uh, for different age groups. And um, we'll wrap up for today. So our objectives for today is um, for everybody on this call and um, the families that uh, we all serve um, um, to receive uh, support um, and um, we're here to listen for your everybody needs and see if we can help with that um, we would love to give you up-to-date information especially information um, that is translated to other um, languages as well. Um, 
and we would love to learn from each other how to support um, our communities um, and we're all in this situation together and we can um, definitely learn from each other and um, focus on our community strength. So um, again, COVID-19 is a uh, um, um, rolling situation that changes all the time. Right now, as you know, in Washington state, um, the order is to stay at home. Um, and this is a little like a flyer that I think um, um, is, um, if you want to share with your families, you're welcome to do that. Just to make some sense for the, uh, this order, what you should do, what you shouldn't do. Um, and very important, what is open and what is closed. I know um, many people are confused about um, which stores are open and where to buy things. and um, um, if you could communicate it with your groups, with your participants, um, that would be um, really valuable. And also, um, as I mentioned in the uh, previous webinars, uh, social distancing is not social isolation. Very important to connect with people in any platform that is available um, um, we don't want people to feel isolated um, a few updates regarding the kpl group um, so um, we have been um, hearing from funders um, the need to um, to communicate with them, with funders about um, attendance and about the work that you're doing right now, communicating with commu your communities um, on other platforms. Um, so I think it would be um, really helpful if you would have something um, maybe written or um, do like some thinking in your organization. What, are, what is the um, scope of work that is now suitable to what you're doing right now because uh, obviously it's different uh, than what you used to do and how you used to connect with families and um, I think it would be beneficial to you beneficial to the funders to hear that that you are still communicating it looks different right now um, um, but just um, let everybody know that you are still communicating still supporting your community and um, you're doing it differently um, and as we are finishing uh, the month of march right now and i know you uh, were tracking your attendance and hours in march um, as you used to do before some of you worked uh, or um, facilitated the groups uh, part of the month and one and some of you haven't worked um, uh, regularly on in, in March um, but I think Zainab um, could talk more about it about the tracking attendance uh, moving forward in April so we have some questions in the chat box. Okay. Okay, regarding for um, tracking attendance and hours, um, we've decided to, 
track that through SurveyMonkey. So in the next couple of days, we're gonna send everyone a link to the survey where you can put in the number of families that are participating in whatever platform you're using and then like an estimate and the number of hours. So in that survey, you can put in comments and whatever else that you are doing currently in that group. So that is where, um, I hope that answers the question. So yeah, that is where you would put all of your information of what you're doing right now currently for the month of April. So be on the lookout for that. I will be sending that in the next couple of days. You want to add anything, Zavit? I am having trouble hearing the last person who just answered. Did she say that's for April or March? For April. So this um, tracking, the Survey Monkey link will be tracking April's um, attendance. Thank you. Does anyone have any other questions about that? Uh, yes, I do. This is Sucheta Paradikrat from IAWW. Um, so since our program is uh, shut down, uh, I mean, it's closed for now, um, how do we track the attendance from the WhatsApp chat that I am doing? Like how? When the program is not there, how should I say my attendance is? And when you say that, and my second question is, when you say that if you can write up, I have a, uh, I have recorded last from, from March March first two weeks, and this last two weeks, um, WhatsApp chat and video uh, picture videos and pictures that my the way I am engaging with my parents and. If you would like to know, how do I share that? I have saved it on a in a Google Doc uh, up on the in the cloud. So, how do I send it to you guys? Did you say a video? Uh, some of it is like you know short videos. That, uh, most of it is in picture forms that what the people have sent it. Like how are they? Uh, what are they doing at home and stuff like that? And so they have sent pictures of their craft activities or pictures of what they are doing uh, at home. Uh, when I send them like a spring picture of uh, like they can do this craft activity for their spring. And so they've sent me pictures like how differently they have done the same spring a tree craft activity, but in a different in a different way, the way they wanted it. And so that that was very creative of them, like you know way uh, beyond than what I had told them. I had told them very preliminary uh, craft activity, but they have even gone ways beyond and done it beautifully. So I have it in picture forms. Uh, so how do I, um, and some like toddler group is in video form. So how do I send that to you? If you could, you could put it into um, a Google Docs fine. I mean, yeah. Word document where you could put maybe the summary of the activities that you've done and attach a link to the videos. That's totally fine. Okay. So, yeah, and your and question then, on attendance, so, sorry. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, then, my first question um, is attendance. Yeah. We just need an estimation. So, say maybe, for example, five people are attending or communicating with the whatsapp group that you mentioned uh -huh. that could be a number of the amount of people for that attendance for that month so the same way you track um attendance when you're doing it in person mm -hmm. you would do the same for this one so if you're doing a virtual group through whatsapp or facebook try to track down or track the number of people watching or participating with you that day. Mm -hmm. If it's the same amount of people or the same people that you know, you can, um, we'll just need an unduplicated amount. Not you, you wouldn't have to keep adding up those people, the same people who are attending. So it'll be the same way. Does that make so sense? I, 
so I still do it uh, monthly, right? Uh, yeah, it will be a monthly report. Yeah. So you want a report or you just want an attendance? Just an attendance. We're going to send, we're, I'm going to try to make a survey uh -huh. like through SurveyMonkey. And, mm -hmm. and, and I'll send that link out via email. And you would just put in the monthly um, amount of people who have attended your um, group. Okay. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. Uh, I also, okay, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I, I know you haven't finished the slides and there is a question <laughs> later on. Sorry about that. And um, uh, about, I just wanna uh, say something about the scope of work, uh, the revised top, scope of work. So first of all, we want you to have it. It's, uh, I think it, um, makes more sense when you have it written and you know what your goals now and how you're going to achieve those goals and second of all i think that you should communicate it in your organization and and um you'll probably be asked by funders to show it and and show how you work right now um we might i need to check it uh Zainab, i'm not sure if it's doable but we might um have an option on the survey monkey that we will ask we will send everybody the link um just to update us on the attendance and what you do and how you do it the platforms that you use so mm -hmm. maybe we will um allow uh to attach a document or just uh leave open uh an open question that you can um describe what you do and how you do it right now yeah the comment section yeah and for the question on if we're going to continue doing attendance like this if the situation currently does continue and yeah we would be doing doing the attendance the same way moving forward onward this is so monthly sorry so it's monthly and then it is a part depending on how many people are attending uh, approximately my WhatsApp uh, group, correct? Yeah, yes. Thank you. Yeah, just an estimation. It doesn't have to be an accurate, uh, accurate number. Thank you. And we had um, a question about if attendance should be submitted for the parts of March when the closure started. Yes, I've received a couple of those and we I do want those attendance. So if you do have any attendance from March, do send it in through the KPL email. Anyone else have any questions about this? I have one question. We already submitted ours for March. Should we go back and add in uh, the additional, if there are any, for the ones that have interacted with this on our on live um, formats. No, that no, that wouldn't be necessary because we want to start the online format um, starting April. Got it. Okay, thank you. And uh, Melissa, I see your question here. Um, so. We know it's not going to be accurate that the people who are that you communicate with through whichever platform that you use, but um, you can um, estimate how many families and um, you contacted through those um, outreach. Um, so yes, uh, starting April, we would like to know uh, numbers uh, uh, digitally, yes. Any more questions? I have a question. Um, this is Melissa. Um, yes. My question is, I we, right now I am waiting for approval from like the big boss before we, um, release the first story time that we recorded. My guess is that it will be shared with way more families than we typically see in March. And you guys are cool with those numbers? 
So would they be viewing it? Is it a video they're viewing? Yes. Um, so it will be shared uh, with other people um, outside the, the group. Correct. Mm -hmm. So again, um, please estimate how many people, how many people from the group. Um, I have no, I'm too new of a group. I have no okay. way of knowing okay. how many, and I don't have like a super consistent group yet mm -hmm. in my sites. Um, yeah, if it's like a YouTube video and they're viewing it, um, I would say you wouldn't need to send that in. Okay. It'll just be a public, a public thing. We just want numbers from those who have groups that are private and they know the amount of people they're participating in those, like a Facebook group or WhatsApp group or whatever other platform. I have additional question. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, since uh, we're talking about the Facebook and stuff, so I've been starting that too. However, some of my families don't have Facebook accounts. So the only thing I'm doing with them is that um, every year, because we meet every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So at those times, I just call them one by one to see how they're doing. And then I kind of like, um, relate to them what I posted on Facebook like if um, I posted like for a, a, a site for for craft then I would just relate that to them how would that um, how would that be with for the attendance so I guess you will combine the the number of people that you are reaching um, through Facebook plus mm -hmm. the people that you are calling. Okay. Yeah, if you know that, like an estimate number of that, that would work. Okay, all right, that, that's all, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions about the attendance? So along that lines, in addition to those we talked to on the phone, would we also count those that we email or email corresponding with, you know, individually back and forth? Yes, I would, okay, yeah, you. I would include that. Thank you. Is this the time to ask questions? Um, regarding attendance? No. Um, so um, just a second, I wanna finish with this slide yes, and then thank you. move on. Um, so I'm not sure if there are any uh, facilitators here who, who are still um, physically seeing the, the families and, um, and still facilitating the group as usual. But um, if you do, please take a look at this, um, attached document for uh, self, uh, safe and healthy practices. And also, I think this is a document that uh, we all would need to use um, when hopefully soon we'll go back to normal activity. Um, so before you go back to open the groups as usual. With regard to the um, attendance that you were talking, you're going to send us, um, the, did I hear it right? You're going to send us some forms that we can um, do our attendance or what? I, I, was, I didn't get that. Yes, it will be a survey monkey link. We'll Sur okay. yeah, gotcha. The next couple of days. All right, thank you. Welcome. Uh, Nicole, I think we could move to the next slide. Sorry about that. I was having trouble unmuting myself. Oh. So I'm going to talk a little bit about um, supporting families right now. Um, we are hearing a lot in the chat about virtual KPL groups. So 
I want to give all of you an opportunity to kind of talk about what you are all doing right now for um, supporting families and caregivers. Um, so we're wondering um, what you are, what are you hearing um, are the needs of families and participants and what ways are you supporting families and participants right now? Um, and again, we'd love to hear any of your ideas or what you're currently doing or thinking about doing. Would you just call on us or we just jump in? You can um, go ahead and raise your hand or jump in um, and just kind of speak about what you're doing right now. Well, with our, um, with our program, um, we also do the Triple P, the Positive Parenting Program. So, um, yeah, that's another way of reaching out to our caregivers who are having a hard time. So, um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, but we give them um, tricks and, you know, um, strategies on how, how or how to deal with their children, especially during this time. Is this something that you're doing online with them or email? Yeah. Yes, I just, um, I just actually um, started this week. I got everything figured out. So, yeah, so for example, a family from my play group is, you know, they, she said that she's having a hard time with her child. So I recommend her to do our um, triple P program, our triple P. So it's kind of nice though because it gets me numbers for the triple p so that's one way i um, help them out what's a triple b it is it's called um triple p is a positive parenting program where if they have questions or problems with um with their children's behaviors we give them strategies on how to you know how to lessen or better yet get those um, bad behaviors out. Were you trained in this program? Um, it's like our program of, um, is a double thingy. It, they come hand in hand. It's just the way it is. It's, uh, it works both ways. And it's hard to explain it, but... <laughs> Yeah, it, it triple P is another program aside from the kaleidoscope. So, oh, I had not heard about it before, so I'm just uh, wanting to know. Yeah, you can you can um, search it you can search it online triple P dot net. B as in boy or P as in Paulina. Paulina. Okay. Triple P it stands for it stands for positive parenting program. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Uh, this is Ramona from North Carolina. How are you all doing? Hi, Ramona. Thank Good. you. Hello, Good. Ramona. So Hi. We have Triple P in North Carolina, and it is a certification program that you have to go through training for. Yeah, thank it's you. A, it's curriculum-based, um, research-based program that helps with parents and caregivers to use strategies to help counter behavior that's not conducive to a child being able to have a positive experience in school or at home. And so it helps with social emotional development of children. So it helps the parents to change how they handle discipline. So if you're used to using um, no and maybe being a little physical with the child, they kind of help you to switch to a different technique that you can use with an understanding as to why that might be a better way to kind of get the child to change the behavior to what you would like for it to be. So parents go through this training with that facilitator over a period of weeks. And so, and it works, it's very effective. But yes. here in North Carolina, so I always speak to Forsyth County and our Child Care Resource Center, we have a stay at home in place right now. And, um, and so what we're doing as a state is through the council, the uh, Child Care Resource Council is, we have an 888 number where all of our parent specialists are on there to help our first responders, our medical staff, our folks who have to go to work find childcare if they don't have it. And so finding and knowing all of the centers, licensed providers who are open, because not everybody is, who is willing to take children that they normally wouldn't take is part of what we're doing right now. The other thing that we're doing is, like through texting, like a lady was saying, not all the time is she able to get folks through Facebook. I don't have Facebook. 
So I contact my parents either through text messaging or we do Zoom, which I absolutely love, um, so I can see them, or a phone call, you know, kind of thing, to try to keep up with them. We provide them as we get information down from the state um, around what's going on, how to keep your children safe, things that you need to be doing. We send that information out to those parents. So I'll send, like today, I sent out emails about how to wash the children's toys, also about what's happening with um, funding for those who don't have a childcare voucher, how they, if you're a private pay, these are the, this is what's available to you now, how do you get it? And so just kind of keeping parents informed that kind of way. And then on Saturday mornings, we do a check-in. So we had one last Saturday. We're gonna be doing one every Saturday this month. So, and the parents like that. We just kind of see how you're doing. I like the idea of um, asking parents, what are they doing at home with their children? How are they getting, you know, what's going on with that? And what kind of help do they need with that? And how is it working? Um, I have a friend who does yoga. And so I asked her Sunday if she would do, um, provide me with either a link or a short video that we could share with our parents that they can do to kind of get some of that stress out because a lot of them weren't expecting to be at home with their children for two months. But um, so just finding things to do that kind of help them relieve that stress that they're going through um, at home. And so that's how we're, we're trying to stay connected because we don't want to lose the momentum that we've started with our families, right? So the book thing, I'm going to be getting some books. Um, like I think it's Melissa is doing, you did some videos, right, Melissa? So reading some books, I love that idea. Thank you so much for it. And just using that, um, once you get permission to share that with the families and doing some activities where we're singing some songs and maybe doing some movement um, together um, live on Zoom. So that's basically what we're doing, what we're doing here in Forsyth County. So just trying to keep it in the road, right? Thank you, Ramona. Thank you. Thank you, Ramona. Thank you so much, Ramona. I would like to know the uh, if there is any online PPP program that I can take currently so that it will help me. I've been a Montessori teacher for the last 30 years, so I have just uh, telling the ha tricks from my hat, but I don't have any formal like uh, anything uh, that PPT that you said. And I would like to watch Melissa's video also where she um, she has some tricks there. So just putting it out there before I forget. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to share how they're connecting with families right now and participants? So Nicole, I would I would share uh, my, um, we have a WhatsApp group, as I said last time, and I send them a lesson plan or I send them something uh, that I would like uh, them to do as a craft activity and uh, share um, uh, our, uh, like, you know, there was a, a New Year's, um, uh, a Hindu New Year uh, recently last week. And I said, uh, how do you celebrate your Hindu New Year? Because in India, uh, in South, North, West, East, everybody celebrates it a little bit differently, the same Hindu New Year. Uh, so they all uh, shared pictures and um, videos of how they shared it with their uh, families. And, um, you know, I congratulated them. And then there was a uh, craft activity that went with it. Um, so, and then they sent uh, shared pictures. So that's what we've been doing it since uh, we have uh, closed, the, uh, closed the center for uh, uh, the same uh, for, for, you know, um, for the COVID-19 and stuff like that. So that's how I've been doing it. Um, but if there is, um, and I've been, I've been wanting to do it online story time, but I don't have an access to the books, uh, you know, the children's books because the library is closed. So I don't know, uh, but I've sent them few stories. Like for example, Amazon is sending the, this, um, uh, stories which are for, for free, uh, listening stories. But it is not the same the way you hear it from your, um, 
your facilitator or your teacher, right? It's not the same. It's just the listening stories that somebody's already told. So I, uh, but I would, but I wanted to have some books on hand so that I can tape it in my own voice, a video, and then share it with my group so that they feel that connection. Um, and so if anybody has any ideas about where to get books in this time, um, because everything is closed right now. So I, I just want some ideas coming up if any other facilitators have any ideas about where to get the books from so that I can tape it in my voice uh, in a video and then send it to my families. Because they connect it with me uh, in a totally different way than they would connect it with some story that, that they stream it from Amazon and then I don't even know unless I hear it whether that story is appropriate or not for my group. So, yeah. So, Chaita, um, Marin has posted some information in the chat box to some links and resources for like ebooks and online library resources that you can access during this time. Yeah, I see the KCL, kcls.arc, right? Yeah, yeah. And she's going to pull together a lot more resources as well and send it to me and we'll email those out to you too. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Would anyone else like to share how they're supporting families and caregivers right now? Um, if, are you currently doing a virtual KPNL group and what that looks like, what platforms you're using? Um, any other ideas? Well, we've been doing, uh, we've done three on, you know, online circle times on Facebook and we just, um, our nonprofit just got a, a Zoom account. So we will be trying to do some kind of virtual meeting via Zoom. I don't know how it will go if parents will want to participate in that way. So we'll try it and I can uh, let everybody know whether it worked or whether it was a total bomb. <laughs> Thank you. Is this Teresa? Yes. Thank you, Teresa. You're welcome. We have a Zoom account and I, e uh, I WhatsApp my moms, but there was so much uh, uh, time. Uh, uh, somebody wants it in the morning. Somebody, they are not sticking it to the same time. So uh, I've been wanting to everybody to do the same. Um, time as we used to meet every Thursday in the morning, but uh, because there are other people in the house right now, that timing is probably not working out for them. And so then we, are, we have not made a conclusion about the timing because we, IWW does have a Zoom account, but we, we, we are just uh, waiting on the, to hear it from the moms on, a, on at least some kind of time that everybody it is accepted, but everybody, so that's, that's what we are working on right now for the Zoom um, video um, story time. Thank you, Sucheta. Mm -hmm. Would anyone else like to share anything? Someone else has added in the chat as well that they are making different early learning activities and caregiver resources in multiple languages for their communities in Chinese, I think it was Mandarin, Cantonese, and Vietnamese. And then they're also using WeChat, which is, I think, I believe similar to WhatsApp as well as Facebook. And that was from the CISC, Chinese Information Services. Great. Thank you, Kim. That's great. Anyone else? Before we move on. Hi, everyone. My name is Kay Marshall, and I'm up here in Whatcom County, Northwest Washington. And I am affiliated with a school district. So I just want to say that they are have adopted. We have access to Zoom. And um, so far, we haven't done a very good at the group thing either, because I just think, too, people, um, it's difficult. And then people get sort of flustered if their children interrupt, which I assure them it's not interrupting. But, you know, it's just not as we're missing each other. So we're doing more of um, individual email check-ins. The other important thing, oh, and then the school district just started um, 
a training with Seesaw, so I don't know a lot about it, but apparently it's going to be a platform that's going to be, um, our, our school district is using it, so they're encouraging me to try that as well. Um, the other important thing is that kindergarten registration is happening right now. And so if you have any families, it, we just completely tossed out our really awesome way that we do it, which is, you know, open houses. I'm in a real small school district. It's open house. Um, and so the Plainland families, it's just a really, you know, we just have a lot of really nice connections. So all of that is out the window um, until we don't know when, but it's still important for those families that have incoming kindergartners to just like make sure that they're connecting uh, electronically with their school district and get those, um, you know, names on the lists and so that the school districts can plan for next fall. So um, it's really nice to see everyone. I, you know, I appreciate being on the call. Thank you for all you're doing. Thank you for that. Thank you. I will surely um, update my parents on WhatsApp group about the kindergarten registration. Link. Thank you so much for reminder. Yes, thank you for that reminder. Would anyone else like to share? Well, if one of you um, think of something, just let us know and we'll give you an opportunity to speak. And um, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next slide. Um, teaching kids how to wash their hands. So Kim found this lovely image from the Minnesota Department of Health website. And it has wash your hands in 20 different languages. And we just thought it was super awesome and wanted to share it with all of you. Thank you. So as all of you know, um, you know, washing your hands is really important um, all the time, but I just think it's such a critical time right now with everything that's going on and um, Proper hand washing is really key to um, preventing the spread of germs and COVID-19 right now. Um, and we also want adults to be informed about hand washing so that they're able to relay the information to young children um, in a fun way. So we have a, I believe we have a video coming up. Oh, not yet. Um, I also, um, I know all of you probably know this already, but we're just going to go over it really quickly. Um, this is from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Um, and it says, when should we wash our hands? Um, before, during, and after preparing food, um, before eating food, before and after caring for someone um, who has been sick um, with vomiting or diarrhea. Um, before and after treating a cut or a wound, um, after using the toilet, after changing diapers or cleaning up after a child who has used the toilet, um, after blowing your nose, coughing or sneezing, after touching an animal, um, feeding animals or picking up animal waste, um, and after handling pet food or pet treats, um, and after touching the garbage, I'm sure there are other ones as well. Um, we'll send out this link um, that we'll send you directly to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention site um, with more information on this. So we're gonna go ahead and watch a short video <clears throat> on hand washing. And there's no sound. Uh, silent video, yeah. Yeah, Everything. silent video.
Okay, so hopefully that was some good general review about hand washing. Um, that could be hopefully useful. Nicole, can we move to the next slide? So now that we've talked a little bit about when to wash your hands and how to, like that video went over, we wanted to dig in a little bit deeper about how we can talk about hand washing with young children. And this is something um, that we wrote up, just a basic example of how you may want to approach this. Um, so if you're with a young child or you're talking to a caregiver who cares for a young child and they're trying to figure out how to talk about hand washing and why we do it, the way you can explain it is germs are small things we can't see. They travel and when they travel, they can get people sick. One way they travel is by jumping from our hands to other people and things. When we wash our hands, we get rid of germs. We need to wash our hands so germs go away and so people don't get sick. So I just wanted to kind of open up this conversation to all of you and to see if all of you have different approaches to explain this to children or resources or words that you would use instead. Because likely this topic has probably come up already within your family. Um, questions and whatnot about COVID. Okay. Well, Hi, I'm Sue from Whatcom County as well. And um, I, I have a Facebook page that I'm share with my families and I found a link that I'd like to put up there. I think it looks cute. Um, it was an activity somebody did where they took a bowl of water and they sprinkled pepper on, in it. And then they had a, the child dip their finger into detergent, dish detergent. And when they put their finger in the bowl with the pepper, the pepper pushed away from the, the finger with the detergent on it as a way of showing that soap repels germs. Mm. And I thought, I thought it was cute. I might try it and see if it works for me. And I thought I might share it with you guys, something visual and active that um, is very tangible for children to see. Yeah, I shared that video already with my um, my group and uh, kids were really thrilled about it. And the moms uh, really thought that was a great way of showing children about germs and soap and water. And yeah, that was a great video. It's been circulating a lot in our WhatsApp group too. Yeah, I also did, um, I also did this thing when this was before the before we stay before the COVID that um, we had this glitter on our hands and uh, we shook the, uh, their hands and uh, ex I ex explained to them how this is how germs can um, transfer from one person to another. And then afterwards we, you know, we taught the children how to properly wash their hands for 20 seconds and sang songs and stuff like that. And it was a good visual for, for the children as well as for the adults to see. I like that. Thank you. I've also heard um, of also using like baby powder and putting it on your hands and then seeing just going about your day and seeing where the baby powder gets on so you can see um, how germs spread as well. That's also another activity idea. Too. Any others? These are great. Keep them coming. Yeah, there's there's a lot of, uh, of activities too that we can find on Pinterest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Perfect, thank you. Um, Nicole, can we change to the next slide, please? Okay, so uh, I, we just jotted down a few basic things to talk about when doing these activities with kids or having these conversations. And basically we want to remind them that we need to be washing with soap, clean water, to be washing in between our fingers, on the back of our hand, and under your nails, and that we need to be washing your hands for at least 20 seconds. So um, to get to 20 seconds long, you can either sing the ABCs or sing the happy birthday song twice. 
that's about 20 seconds. Are really any other song that is about 20 seconds that is in English or in um, your home language or whatever it may be? It's happy birthday. What was that? Happy birthday twice. Sing happy birthday yes. to you. Happy birthday twice is a perfect way um, to teach them how long to wash their hands. And the next slide is a basic video of a child washing her hands. And we like to show that for you. Wash your hands! First you need some soap, then scrub for 20 seconds. If you don't have a clock near you, then sing the ABC song. Be sure to scrub front and back, under your fingernails, and between your fingers. Dry your hands with a clean towel or a paper towel. For more information, go to www.cdc.gov slash clean hands. All right, and we have another video on the next slide, um, which is from the Chinese Information Services Center. Um, they sent this to us. They made a version in English and in Chinese. And we just wanted to share this with you to give an example of what some affiliates are doing right now to support their communities in um, education about hand washing. <laughs> All the bubbles, all the bubbles. Yong chicken tassel, so yong chicken tassel, so gone dang sigh, gone dang sigh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so I found another video of the, you know, uh, the baby shark to two. Uh, yeah. So two cute um, uh, Chinese kids have on the same tune, they have sung why you should wash your hands and sung and dance. And that's a really cute video that I can forward it to you. Very to cute. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Um, so we encourage all of you this week to think about an activity. It could be the pepper and detergent activity or using baby powder, whatever it is, um, to talk about hand washing. And to also just practice properly washing your hands um, with their children in your lives, whether that be at home or their children participating um, in your virtual KPL group right now. Um, just, to have, just to have these conversations and also be a real model and also model proper hand washing as well because kids are watching us. Um, and we want to make sure that we're setting a good example. And let us know how that goes too um, when we meet again next week. Oh, and I just also want to make a quick side note um, about teaching kids also to cover their coughs and sneezes. That's also really important to do. We want to remind them to use a tissue to cover the cough or sneeze or to do so in their elbow and to not do that in their hands because germs can spread. So if that does happen, we want also to remind them to wash their hands immediately if they cough or sneeze into their hands. Also something to talk about as you're talking about hand washing. And the next slide, uh, we are always looking for resources in different languages. So this comes from the King County of Public Health um, it just shows us steps about hand washing and being germ free. This is available in English and also 20 other languages. So if this is something that you're interested in sharing with your communities. Um, definitely look into this as well. Can I stop you for here for a minute? Yeah. Uh, in my community and uh, in, you, you know, working with young children, what I noticed the most is not about coughing, but they love picking their nose. <laughs> and it's from my granddaughter also she likes picking nose is fun grandma <laughs> so uh, i made uh, 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 like you know i also made the kids in my group aware of like what happens uh, you know when you pick nose and how important it is to uh, to clearly wash your hands every time you pick your nose and not just after coughing or before eating and stuff Yes, that's perfect, Suchita. Thank you for bringing that up because that is definitely um, something kids do. 
And I did not think to put that in this presentation. So I'm glad you brought that up. And it looks like in the chat box, there are, there are lots of great resources people are posting and sharing related to hand washing um, from like Sesame Street and other types of YouTube videos and whatnot. Thank you so much for sharing those. Um, if you're not looking at the chat box right now, but are interested in more resources related to this, definitely take a look. And um, these are just some links to the English and Chinese version of the video we just watched, um, of the hand washing, the Center for Diseases and Control, the CDC, also has some really nice fact sheets about hand washing um, for children and families and resources on that in English and in Spanish. So that is something that um, you would be interested in sharing with your families. Please look into that. And the next slide, actually, someone had already brought this up in the chat box, um, was about our lesson guide on dirty hand spread germs. So in our follow-up email after this webinar, we'll be sure to attach this if you don't have access to the, to the lesson guides at the moment. Um, but this is a great way to get ideas about what you can be doing um, within your KPL networks right now related to resources on hand washing spring germs, main points to talk about, activity ideas, book lists, and so on. So definitely don't forget about the KPL curriculum in general right now and leaning on that if you're needing some support in leading your groups during this unusual and unprecedented time. And I think that's it, Nicole, if you wanna to go to the next slide, that's all you. Yeah, um, some more resources. We've gotten several requests for activity ideas, book ideas. Um, so each week we will send out something that looks like this um, attached to the follow-up email. This would be for this week. Um, the first activity is just kitchen treasure basket. It's just fun activities for babies um, using what you have at home. Um, and the second one is creating tunnels with pieces of paper. Um, so there, you know, the links are there. And for children who are more interested in learning about tunnels, there's also a link to a PBS um, page with really great information, um, why we use tunnels and um, sort of like the history behind them. And then um, our recommendation for a book and where to find the book and listen to it. Um, you can see it a little bit better here. Um, and so we will go ahead and send that sheet out with the follow-up email and make sure that you all get access to the link. And this was our book recommendation this week. And, um, and you can listen to the story here. I really try to weed through a lot of um, a lot of folks that are reading books to make sure that it was something that sounded engaging for young children. And so um, I'll do my best to make sure that um, that they're just fun, that the stories are told fun and engaging, um, the ones that we share with you. And I'll pass it on to Zivi. So um, this is actually a time just for for anyone who want to share um, some updates, some concerns, um, share with us what support do you need, uh, other than resources uh, that we're trying to um, to bring here in the webinar, but other things that we can support you with. Um, we really would love to hear some, some from everybody here in the, in the group. Can I ask a question? Sure. Um, so uh, those of you who are using like live formats, when you're meeting with your families, what are you doing during that time with families? Did you ask what we're doing when we're meeting with them live? 
Unmute your button. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, on our Facebook page, um, Mondays and Wednesdays, I do a 15 minute live circle time that's recorded so they can watch it later. But it involves a story and I, I um, have been, you know, you say it, it's being read with permission of most, a lot of the publishers have given us permission as long as we say that. Then I sing some songs and I usually, I might do a flannel board activity that they can see. And then I have something that I show them. So for example, this last time I did something about gardens. And so I showed them some seeds and um, like a butternut squash seed. And then I showed them a, a, a butternut squash that it would grow into. Or I showed them, you know, a, a tiny um, onion seedling that grew into an onion. So I think of things around my, my house that I could show them. One time I talked about circles and then I showed them things at my house that were shaped like a circle. And so basically I just try and do three things, read a story, sing some songs, and show them something. And it's about 15 minutes is all. Teresa, are you able to share that Facebook page? I don't know if it's public or not, but someone has It asked. is public. Yeah. It is public. Oh, good. It's called, okay. it's called um, Mother Mentors of Whidbey Island. Yeah, I'll see if I can share the link here below. Um, I think the first video we did, I didn't say I'm reading it with permission of blah, blah, blah. But um, now we, we are doing that uh, moving forward. So. Um, I'll see if I can share the link in the chat as well. I'm curious how one would get permission to read a story online. Suzanne, I posted a link that I got from a friend who's a librarian telling different, different um, publishers have different rules. And so if you scroll up, you'll find that. For Scholastic books, you just have to begin by saying, I have permission from Scholastic to use this book. And then I think you have to take it down by June 30th. But different publishers have different expectations. I will, I will look at your link. How long did it take to get the permissions? they that the link that i provided you don't have to you don't have to individually approach them they just tell you their expectations um in that link dur especially during this time so mm -hmm. i didn't have to speak to scholastic they it they just have said you may use any of our books during this time as long as they're down by june 30th and you give us credit can you please you. Uh, send this link in the chat box as well or in the email or whichever format is easy for you? It's in the link. It's already in the chat. Okay, thank you. So if it's in the chat, do we need to copy that down by hand or will those links get shared with us later? We, uh, we can uh, uh, also share this link later. Yeah, we'll add it to the resources that we're gonna share. Thank you very much. We also have a link from last the last webinar we did, and I'll check and see if it's been updated. That have a list of publishers that are um, that have also allowed people to read their stories, and so um, I can double check and see if that list has been updated, and we can send that out when we do a follow up email as well. Fabulous. Any other updates? Something that you would like to share? Um, any needs that you are hearing from your families specific? Um, we are also sharing the, if they have any immigration concerns, we are also sharing them uh, um, the links that they can get online uh, consultations from a lawyer, which is a pro bono from our community, and they can uh, very, uh, in a very confidentiality, they can talk to this lawyer and 
uh, talk to them online if they have any um, uh, issues there. Um, another thing that we did also, like one of um, the um, ancillary support uh, staff in Swedish over Lake and um, uh, and a Great Samaritan Hospital in Pyolup, they asked uh, to, if we have some masks, if we can make some homemade masks uh, for the ancillary support uh, workers like uh, pharmacist or you know uh, people who take x-rays and stuff like that because they are not allowed to use masks anymore so uh, our community we pulled out the resources went and got fabric did prototype and made some about 1000 masks just to support uh, support these uh, uh, hospitals and went and delivered them and we are again supporting a few more masks so it's like an on online thing that is going on, um, uh, ongoing thing that is happening in our community as well. But it's not related to, uh, to our no. families. One of the families had a problem. And so we made a prototype mask for them and then the idea just emerged from that and people just reached out and we made masks. And they That's are amazing. Here. Hi, this is Ramona. Um, in I think the biggest thing for us here is not so much for the younger children, but for the older children, school-age children, for parents trying to figure out how to structure their day to make sure that they get um, the required work done, but also allowing time for breaks in between. What do they get to do in that time? How do I get them back on track? Um, just kind of that, the scheduling of the day and then having the parents have an opportunity to have a moment to themselves seems to be the biggest thing here because of the stay-at-home order. You just can't get out like you want to. Now you can walk around your block, um, you can ride your bike a little bit, but you got to stay in your neighborhood. You can't go out. Um, and the weather is warm here, so it was like 78 degrees the other day. You know, it's that warm. You want to get out. So how do you handle that? But um, just trying to find ways for parents to uh, do things with their children and keep their sanity. I think it's the biggest thing here. Also, the, the childcare piece, the, those folks who have to get to work and if their normal home provider is shut down, I'm finding somebody to replace that person while they're having to get to work and someone they can trust. Um, they've got the, the additional um, funding available to pay and then there won't be any parent fees for May and June I'm sorry for April and May for parents here so you know just being able to find someone that you normally your person is closed now who do you go to so that's where we're stepping in kind of helping families with who's available you know in the counties nine counties that we serve and um, how do parents get them there and making sure their children are safe and well taken care of. So I was talking to a mom of Saturday, she's a nurse, and she has one son, and he's been at the same child care center since he was, I think, six or nine weeks old. And now he's the only one in his classroom, which normally the classroom has um, about six or seven kids in it, but he's the only one that's there right now. So stuff like that, that's kind of what's going on here in, in Forsyth County. And, North Carolina. So we're just trying to do what we can to help the families. I, and then, you know, people's the uncertainty about how long this is going to last. So initially, with school was only supposed to be out for two weeks. Now it's out through May the 15th. And so it looks like it's going to be June now. But what do you do? The uncertainty of it all, I think, is the biggest thing here. What I told my parents is like, you know, how to schedule their day. Like in the morning you get up, you have breakfast, then you have like some art project to, to, to get you joyfully started. Then, you know, um, take a walk around the neighborhood, then eat lunch. So and doing the same thing consistently every day would really, really help so that they are not tearing their brain apart saying that, oh, what do I do tomorrow? What do I do today? And then just by providing them uh, with different ideas for activities is 
really help them out. And um, some of the moms really reach out to me personally on a single WhatsApp and say, hey, I worked with this with my child. What do I do next? And so uh, I've just been taping my voice and telling them what to do because it takes so long to type and stuff and it's easier to just hear it for them in my voice. So iPhone has that ability to like just tape it and send it. And that's what has been helping uh, the moms too in my group. Ramona, this is Kay again. Um, I, I really, I, I don't know what your schools are doing, but we have in our state, it's called Child Care Aware. So we're the families that are needing child care, the essential workers. We have the state uh, family call center that is really, they've they're just all hands on deck there to help families. In addition, our school districts are working together to partner with our licensed providers like the YMCA and people who are able to stay open. Most of our, most everyone is closing because the children are staying at home. Um, but we're um, working hard to support our licensed providers, like with school nurses, are going to the sites and, and helping with the check-in and they have the protocol that they can teach people to take the temperature and, have, and track these types of things to make sure everyone is staying healthy and the staff as well. But I'd really encourage you to use the school districts to, for support as well, for school agers, you know, and have them see what they can do to support the early learning community and the school age um, families of children who need care because it's a it's a just another layer of the crisis and the, the licensed providers their ratio numbers are down so even if they have classrooms they can only have eight at the most you know it's, it's just so complicated but I, I I would say pull in pull in the school districts and 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 ask them for support as well so our, our school district has been really good about that and then we've got a lot of We've got over 100 nonprofits in Forsyth County. And so a lot of them, I would say a quarter of them deal with education, either early education or um, education K-12. And so they've jumped in as well. And then other organizations who aren't, that isn't necessarily their focus, are providing assistance as well. But you still have that pocket of folks who um, whose needs aren't being met. And then, um, so how do you, you know, what are we doing to kind of help those folks? Now, as a child care resource center, we are part of that network in the state that provides information and resources for families in the state who are looking for child care who don't have it available to them because their, their normal child care has shut down, be it a home provider or a child care center. So we're, we're doing that. But it's just, you know, just in talking to parents and just from talking to other professionals in the work, you know, you still have some of that, of that anxiety going on and some of that support that's those little gaps that are still there for folks that we're trying to, uh, to close for families still. So, but we're trying our best. We're just trying our best right now. So everybody's trying, jumping in and doing what they can. Um, and, you know, and I tell parents all the time, just, you know, get your glass of wine, you'll be fine. You will be fine. Yeah. Thank you. And same here. Everybody else hang in there too. We're all, we're all in the same boat and all still feeling it in our own family. So thanks for all of your support on this call and um, hang in there, everybody stay healthy. <laughs> and um, I just want to, um, there was a question from uh, Melissa um, about how can we all support the childcare providers that are still operating and um, I don't know if you uh, everybody knows, but child care resources or um, we have the kaleidoscope uh, program, but we are also operating the child care of, Rare of Washington um, uh, call center that uh, Kay you mentioned. So we are operating that call center and um, we are actually trying to help providers who are still open to get supply that they're not able to get themselves, like cleaning supplies. Uh, some of them um, don't even have access to cleaning supplies because they can't purchase it or um, it's not available in the stores anymore. And some of them um, uh, are in a risk to close because they're not able to keep uh, the 
um, uh, cleaning uh, protocols and safety protocols in their childcare uh, facility. So um, we are now uh, collecting um, those supplies. If you know people who would not like to donate uh, supplies, this is something that we do in childcare as well. We are distributing it to the providers that are still open. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, I see that we have the same problems all over the country. <laughs> North Carolina, Seattle, uh, Washington State, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, anyone else? No. Hi. Hello? Yes. Hi, I'm Connie. So how are yes. you guys doing? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know everyone is so frustrated at home. So I want to share some of the things like, um, I know that we are stay at home, like someone like me with kids and then, um, it's hard to deal with like work and then kids together. So um, it's good to, uh, as a facilitator or as a um, early earning educator, we should be like more um, mentally support with the parents because it's hard to like full-time mom and also you have to work as a full-time at home and also try to be uh, encourage the family um, more creative about the schedule um like looks like traditional schedule doesn't really work uh to all the families like me i cannot really do traditional scheduling with my kids because like if you have kids you don't really cannot concentrate the work so uh, for me i will suggest the family to be more creative maybe not try to do your if you try to do your work at night or try to teach your kids at night try to separate like work and um have fun with the uh with the children so make it more like creative and then then more like i know that we have to uh find some way to occupy our kids give a lot of like find a lot of activity ideas for the parents to um deal with the kid do with them but i think as a facilitator we should give more resources to the uh as they act out to tell them how do they relax if you have like jungle at the home <laughs> <laughs> how to like relax yourself um how to um and how to i mean like you have to feel like oh yeah everyone in the same boat like you have to be more like emotionally support to the families that's what i want to say thank you thank you connie um nicole maybe we could Move to the next slide. So um, our thoughts for the next webinar. Um, um, of course, we will include again activities um, that you can share with your families to do at home. Um, we would also include um, some information about how to take care of ourselves during this challenging time. Uh, this is important for everybody, for you, for the families, for your families. Um, I think that's a, that's a must now to be aware of how do we take care of ourselves and stay strong emotionally, mentally, and physically. Um, any other topics that you would love to like to get from us? Um, what would be useful for you to hear from us? Hi, this is Helen from CISE. Um, 
we work in partnership with King County Housing and Seattle Housing, and they've been asking for um, just resources, um, activities for families to do at home. So just if we could do a directory, we I think we started sharing some resources today, um, but if we could share what's being done, if there's some live Facebook groups um, in different languages, and just kind of being there for each other to support and collaborate and share those resources, I think we can reach even um, more families. And I think just given that CISC is, um, is a social service agency, we can really share that information to you know, our communities served and then share it with our partners and just keep that conversation and connection going. Because I think, you know, as Connie was talking about, we, we may feel isolated, you know, personally with the family, but, you know, also how are we as service providers and as facilitators, how do we break that isolation for the families and for other community agencies so we're not duplicating that work and we're not spinning the wheel, you know, over and over and that we're really, you know, working to sort of collaborate and share. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree with you, Helen. And, um, um thanks to kim and nicole we now have on our website we have a list of resources that um keeps being updated with more resources and the resources that we you uh, mentioned today would be added to this list and it's a list that is divided by age group and uh, kim and nicole are updating this list and and um they will share a link to this web page. This is the Child Care Resources uh, website, but we will send the follow-up um, um, email will include this link as well. Um, also will be included in this um, in this follow up uh, email is um, the link to register for the next webinar and please um, uh, pay attention to the time because it's going to be at one instead of three. Um, we um, got a request from our partners in the East Coast. Um, that they would love to participate as well in this call and 3 p.m. would make it six for them, which is um, um, more challenging. Um, so we're switching the time to 1 p.m. and I hope that would work for most of you. Um, there's a link to last week's webinar, uh, to the recording and also a link to the KPL YouTube um, channel where you can find all the webinars that were recorded um, in the past, including today's webinar. Hi, this is Julie <clears throat> from um, Bellingham, Washington. And, um, we have our KPL group at a library, and so um, I just wanted to pass along a little information about reading stories um, virtually. Um, there, there are some guidelines coming out from publishers, but there's also a recognition that we're in a very special circumstance right now. And so people don't need to fret too much if they read a book that, um, you know, may have some publisher restrictions on it at this point particularly if you're not going to keep that video available forever and ever and ever. So if you're gonna make a video that's available for your families um, for a limited amount of time, which that's what we're look, looking at doing at the library as well, um, we're keeping a list of those um, titles and the publisher, and we're looking for updates as they come but a number of publishers haven't really even specified what can and can't be read at this point. So I just wanted to share that so people weren't holding off um, no, on so that much right now. sharing that because I was holding off for that only reason. And um, I am just sharing this, my video of reading stories only to my family uh, on a WhatsApp group. So. I hope that is, I mean, I have not done it, but I was waiting for that, uh, that assurance. And so, uh, 
I, I hope that is okay to do that just to, to share it with my WhatsApp group and not with online or anything on YouTube or anything like that. Thank you so much. Um, um, as you see, it's really helpful <laughs> for everyone to know that um, there, there is some flexibility. Thank with, you. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, and, and I, I can see that, here. Oh, sorry. I saw there was a question about a live feed. And I, I, to be honest, I'm not exactly sure. Again, that's something we're learning more about at the library. Um, I don't know, is a live feed available forever? <laughs> if it is, then there might be more considerations, but if a live feed is also only available for a limited amount of time, uh, yeah, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Okay, thank you about that. Thank you. I know. Is it 10 or? Um, there is a request here to also um, uh, talk about how to limit screen time at home. Um, I jotted that down as one of the future ideas. Thank you. Great. Yeah. Okay. Um, Thank you very much, everybody, for making the effort and coming here to this virtual space. Um, we love to hear from you every week and see how you're doing and uh, try to answer questions that you have. Um, if you have any questions um, after this webinar ends, uh, please contact us, uh, email us or call us and we are available to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much, you everyone. Everyone. Thank everyone. Have a good you. week. Stay Thank healthy. You. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye, Thank Take you. care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.